Hello, and we are starting on Project 1, Welcome Arts 102. I want to talk to you today about creative thinking. We're going to talk about what it means to brainstorm and prepare for a project and what the design process is all about. This is a little bit more of a story time presentation. You don't need to take any notes on this. It's just kind of to um, get you prepped and get your mind in a hopefully creative mood. And I got a little story for you. Once upon a time, people used to use phone lines to call one another. When computers were entering homes, pre-internet, they used these phone lines for calling other computers, referred to as bulletin board systems or BBSs. System operators were referred to as SysOp. So, take a look at a classic movie here. Anybody remember this one? So, as you can see, this was kind of the precursor to the internet. Uh, people would call one system at a time, they'd exchange files, play games that were text-based, and use forums and chat, set up profiles, and basically cyber-socialize in pretty much the same way many people do today. These computers were sometimes linked together with networks, but these networks were still comparatively closed. The internet was just a dream at this point the internet as we know it today. Graphics could not be part of these transmissions. People had text as you saw in the War Games clip. It was 80 characters wide by 25 characters tall and this is basically what a message window would have looked like. In the late 80s for the first time extended characters including extremely primitive graphics and 16 colors were introduced. This was used by sysops to make the BBS more visually appealing to the best of their ability. It was referred to as ANSI graphics. ANSI equals the American National Standards Institute. There were some who could take these primitive graphics and actually make them quite beautiful, speaking in relative terms here. There were some who could work within these unreasonable limitations and make actual art. And sysops, of course, valued this ability. To those whom decent ANSIs were not readily available, they were coveted. These artists were likely to be revered in a microcosm like Lansing because so few people could do it. People like your instructor. Like-minded people would gather together across the country and the world through the use of the aforementioned pre-internet networks and exchange their art. They formed groups. The best of the best in the world formed into two competing groups, ANSI Creators in Demand, shortened to the acronym of ACID, and Insane Creators Enterprise, shortened to ICE. And we had a thing for lowercase i's, I don't know, it's just the way it was. I was in ICE. So, if you could imagine, if you will, a, a high schooler finding an international audience for their artwork, within that little niche, that is an epic win. And, however, outside of that niche, people were just kind of clueless. they just give you blank stares if you tried to show this to them. Um, nobody really got it, unless they were involved with that group. Nobody would have really cared unless they were involved with that group. If I had ever tried to convince anyone outside of that group of the medium's artistic merit. So why am I telling you this? Well, what I want to talk about is what it means to have ideas. This is just me working with this medium and 
finding an amazing little niche and it was ju it just started as a simple little idea it gave me a good start in digital design um, it did have merit <clears throat> helped me pay attention to detail and start dealing with technicalities and all that jazz but the big takeaway today is that the most important thing for an artist is to have big ideas Do you think Rembrandt started out looking like this and Da Vinci started out like this? No. They worked their whole lives. They tried, tried, tried again, developing their ideas. They worked over and over. Thousands and thousands of pieces worked up to the famous ones that you're used to. And that's what this is about. I just want you to try to have ideas. I want you to develop your ideas. I want you to start with brainstorming, talk with your peers, figure out tips and encourage each other, work through your ideas and um, feed off of each other. Uh, you're just going to have to throw things out there, just keep throwing things out there and keep trying. This is going to be an ongoing process throughout your artistic lifetime, so get used to it. And always remember, your first idea is basically never your best. It is this creative ability to dream up big ideas that made the Mona Lisa the automobile and brought computer graphics out of the Dark Ages. There are many who say this is the most creative part of art. Grab your pencils and get ready to think big. Maybe digital pencils. Thank you for listening, and have fun with Project One.